So we are back answering those text questions about the coronavirus uh, with Cone Health's Chief Pharmacy Officer, Dr. Deanne Brooks. Remember, text those questions, the numbers at the bottom of your screen. All right, this first question is one that we have answered before, but I think we should answer it again. Will we be able to choose a Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Yeah, so we really can't right now um, choose our vaccines at our clinics because we only have one vaccine per clinic. So we, we can't make that choice right now. Mm -hmm. uh, does Cone Health plan on opening up vaccinations to group five any earlier? We don't anticipate opening up any earlier than what the state is asking us to do. Group five is scheduled to open up within one week. So on April 7th, we will be open for group five. So when we have those appointments that are open next Monday, that will be for group five. So everyone who is ready to get their vaccine can roll up their sleeve and get their shot. Yeah, so again, group five, Aug I mean, April the 7th. So like she said, just a week away. All right, are there any uh, vaccines that are better than the other? That, I, I will not say that one of them is any better than the other. I would personally receive any of these vaccines and I would also um, share with my family members that um, wherever they go, if there's a vaccine available and an appointment, that they will be safe and they will be effective to get any of the three vaccines that are currently authorized. Mm -hmm. All right, so this person is asking, is Cone Health seeing appointments fill up slower than before since now there are more options of locations to receive a vaccine? Yeah, it's um, we have seen a little bit slower um, filling of our vaccine appointments, which I think is a positive thing to happen so that whenever you go online to schedule your appointment, you are likely to find one particularly earlier in the week um, compared to when we first opened up patient appointments and they were filling up within an hour. And we also have, again, as I mentioned before, we have that method. We don't have a wait list anymore, but we we do have that method that you can sign up to be notified when more appointments are scheduled and that's certainly helping everyone get the appointments. Mm -hmm. And I know even from my own experience I checked at one point and there were no appointments available and then I checked a couple hours later and appointments for the next day had opened and I was like okay this is my chance so exactly. you kind of have to do it at different times. All right uh, this person is asking if you have food allergies and your doctor wants you to get Moderna how can you go about doing that? Yeah, so I think um, the, if your doctor has specifically asked you to get a certain vaccine, you can certainly ask when you make the appointment or when you show up at the clinic, what vaccine are you giving today? Um, but we, we're we not putting that on our website exactly which vaccine is being um, administered at this time. And so it would just be a matter of just asking. Okay, and do you think it's also maybe a matter of waiting too? If it's not that, would you suggest that they then wait until they could find another appointment or? Well, I, if their doctor has specifically asked them mm -hmm. to get one vaccine, I, I would not jump over what, or not jump over, but I would not um, change what their doctor had requested on that. Um, so I, you know, we have enough of the vaccine that's available, at least in the near future, we surely will, that someone would be able to wait probably not too long to be able to get the vaccine that they want. Or we could tell them, um, hey, at this clinic, we have mm -hmm. Moderna and we have some appointments available. And I think that's a really good point that we're not in danger of running out of the vaccine so there are still opportunities. There will be opportunities for them to get one. All right, so this person is asking, what are some of the more intense side effects that people feel when they get their second shot? Yeah, so it's really interesting because it's, it's very patient specific, um, the experience that they have with the vaccine. What I hear more frequently about a second dose of the vaccine is that they just felt more, um, achiness all over their body and just really felt like they didn't want to get up out of bed maybe and it typically does not last for more than 24 hours. And then just this is a follow-up because it came right up after it. Are side effects more harsh for people who take the J&J &J or the two-shot vaccine option? Yeah, so we, we do know from the studies that the J&J &J, um, vaccine does seem to have a, um, studies have shown it has a little milder side effect profile. Mm -hmm. 
All right, this person is asking, after having the vaccination, what is the likelihood that you could contract the virus if you are exposed? Yeah, so it is possible. Again, these are very effective vaccines. And so um, the earlier ones, the, the variants were not, um, uh, when we were testing for those in those trials, the variants were not um, as prevalent as they are now. They were um, out whenever we were testing the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So it's going to be a low percentage that you would actually contract the disease, but it is possible. And that's also the importance of us being, of us wearing our masks, even though we've been vaccinated right now, because even though we may not have symptoms, of COVID-19, it could be in our nasal passages that we could still give it to someone else. All right, we're going to take a break there and we do have several mass questions. So those are coming up after the break. We invite you to text your questions so that we can get it in uh, during our last segment. We'll be right back.